I haven't played Smash since the first Wii. Like, <laughs> and I remember Jason, Jason, if you're watching this, bro, like, why did you break my TV, man? Like, bro, like, you know, these controllers and shit with the wristbands, like, that was, bro, you've seen so many vines, and it's like, that shit never gonna happen to my TV, but you bring someone over like Jason, and Jason gonna break your TV, and it's just like, <laughs> over what, bro? Like, we was playing bowling or something. And... <laughs> What's good guys you're watching my interview with push the wall make sure y'all check this out leave a like comment i hope y'all get to know me a little bit more after watching this i grew up everywhere bro i grew up in the middle east mostly um i moved to canada when i was 14. started high school here um, because my parents wanted situations wasn't good in the middle east when i moved so it was kind of like my family's retreat sort of um and then I grew up here in Toronto. Um, I lived in Burlington for a bit. And I just moved around with my family until I moved out when I was 17. And that was like one of the biggest things for me is like coming to a new country and just kind of moving out, feeling like I have to be independent. See, it's hard, bro. I'm like trying to pay attention and play because like I'm first and it's nervous, but. Um, so yeah, like I grew up in two different places. I switched almost. Damn, I switched high schools in grade nine. I switched high schools in grade 11. Like, I switched like three different middle schools. So I've been all over the place, but the difference between being in the Middle East and Canada, it's huge, bro. And that's like one of the biggest motivations for me is that I came here and now I'm able to do this music stuff. Like I'm able to be a creative here. And it's so much easier because there's so much more support in where we are today and a lot of people take that for granted and just that's just one thing that i wanted to point out that if you're not from the middle east if you're not from these areas where it's harder to be a creative it's hard to lose appreciation and say like oh like i'm here i'm doing what i want to do and nobody's judging me nobody's saying anything so i think that's kind of cool so growing up music wasn't part of my life i never like i miss i feel like i missed out a lot on old school rap, like old school music, um, influential music. Like I never even listened to Alicia Keys or Adele growing up. I never listened to 50 Cent. Like it was only until I was 16 that I kind of got into it and started, I remember I had an iPod, one of them small ones, like the square ones, and I had the headphones plugged in. And it was just like, I was torrenting music off of LimeWire. I was there like 14, 15. I remember the only songs that I was exposed to was like mainstream radio songs, like Eaz, Replay, like Akon was big during the time, you know. That's all I listened to growing up. I started getting into rap, you know. I was a big Eminem fan. I was a big 50 Cent fan when I was 15. Who else? Andre 3000, Kanye West, like those were big influences on me growing up. And I feel like during my teenage years, like I started music when I was 17. So it was, it didn't take me long to get into the music scene after I got exposed to it. So. I feel like that's one of the factors that it's like, this is for me. Like, I want to do it so bad. Like, it's, it's, it's there. I want to chase it. And being here in Canada, it was it's a blessing, man. Like, all the people around you and stuff, it's just, it's humbling. It's humbling. I'm not even good at it, bro. Like, I'll tell my friends, like, yo, I'll slap you in 2K. And then it's like, when it's time to play, I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm tired, bro. Like, you got an Advil or something. Like, my head hurts. Oh, my God. Okay, so... My rap name is my middle name, Junior. Um, when I first started, like I was, I was taking it very, very slow. I didn't know like what my rap name was gonna be, so I just used my name, um, and that that didn't work out really well. So I was like, okay, I need I need a one letter thing that is genuine. That's me, and Junior is pretty much my other personality. It's my second person. It's my. It's just my alter ego, and the reason I put the V in there is because it's easier to search online. Like, it's harder to pronounce, but it's easier to search online. So, I played RuneScape for a bit. That was, that, that was a big underrated game. That was, like, fifth grade, like, sixth grade. And then I stopped playing, like, video games until, like, I got into Call of Duty a little bit. I got into, you know, like, everybody was playing them kind of games, but... I was always a PS4 fan, so you know, any, any PS4 games that came out, I was always on top of that, like 2K, FIFA, but I, I wasn't really a huge 
gamer. Like, I would buy the games. I would be like, yo, I copped the newest game. I Whatever. I didn't play it. Like, I was trash. I just never... People would always challenge me, and I'd be like, okay, let's play. And then it's just like halfway through the game, you know, you press the quit button and just leave. It's just like... When I first released my single, Need You, and it was last summer, um, the first week of releasing it, it hit 100,000 streams. And seeing like hundreds of DMs, like literally I was at the peak for me of almost doing music for four years. It was like a peak for me. And I was like, okay, now do I pursue this fully or do I just lay back and say, oh, I just have one song that did well and that's all I'm going to do. So I said, let me see how the people are going to react. Let me release more music. So I started releasing more and I started getting emails from labels and it started getting serious when... I signed with a label that really helped me push my music, Karma X Wave. They kind of took me in and believed in me and they said, you have potential as an artist. And it wasn't until I got into the studio and put myself in that environment that I knew it was serious. If I was still a kid in the basement just kind of making music, it wouldn't have gone anywhere. Being on the internet most of your life and then transitioning to the real world, it's it's tough and nobody can do it. And that's where a lot of people fall off, like being able to sit down in meetings and convince other people that your music is good enough. Because there's a lot of good music out there. There's a lot of good artists. There's a lot of talented people, but it's only a few people that can sit down in meetings and walk out with 100,000, like very, very few people. And a lot of these people aren't the best at making music, like if I'm being honest. That's, that's how it is for me when I started sitting down in meetings and people were talking to me, letting me know that there is potential in this. People that have changed other people's lives telling me this, that's when I started realizing, okay, I have a chance in this. I have an album coming out in around, yeah, I think I can announce this. I hope, banana, don't be mad at me. Um, the album comes out around May, June time. It's called Soon Not Later. And the album on there defines my sound um it wasn't until the song need you that i really found my character that that bell sound that afro pop something that you can dance to you could play this music anywhere and still vibe out to it i always want to feel like my music is given joy or some kind of emotion a lot of people will take the music differently based on the vibe but bro figure out your sound as an artist it takes time and it's hard because like as an artist, it's, it's hard to satisfy us. It's hard to tell us, like, this is good enough. It's never good enough. It's really never good enough. Like, you will switch up 50 flows on one song just to get the right, oh, this has to be timeless music. Like, that's the hardest thing about being an artist is you want something that you're going to put out, and 30 years down the line, you're going to look at it and be like, I'm proud I put that out, rather than, oh, shit, I wish I could have done this differently. I wish I did done this differently. Get rich or die trying. I remember I bought that and I brought it home and my mom whooped my ass, bro. My mom whooped my ass. She was like, yo, what is this? And I was like, oh, it's, uh, it's music. Like, I've been listening to, you know, Candy Shop and whatever, like, on this video game. And it's like, it's dope. I was like 15 or 14 that time. So the album had come out. To this day, like, that's what I'm trying to do as an artist. I'm trying to have that much impact on people and just kind of make them feel like, oh, like, maybe I should go to the store and buy this if I did release physical copies. And that's the hardest thing to do as an artist is bring people out, make sure that people actually care about your message and not just the music. The music doesn't, there's a lot of music that sounds good, but how many people are actually gonna have people come out to the store and buy their album? It's only a few. Can we, can we switch the game? Yeah, I think that's a good. I haven't played Smash since the first Wii. Like, <laughs> and I remember Jason, Jason, if you're watching this, bro, like, why did you break my TV, man? Like. Bro, like, you know these controllers and shit with the fucking wristbands? Like, that was... Bro, you've seen so many vines, and it's like, that shit never gonna happen to my TV. But you bring someone over like Jason, and Jason gonna break your TV, and it's just like... <laughs> over what, bro? Like, we was playing bowling or something. And you listen to it, and it really hits you differently. Like, I get DMs different every single day, just people telling me how it affects them differently. Like oh, this music is like great to work out to, bro. Like I've been trying to lose weight and this has like my, been my motivation. Or like people telling me that, oh, I love seeing you grow. It's so inspirational. Like it helped me like chase my, my dream of learning how to play the piano or whatever. And it's just like, 
it's cool to see that, you know, it's cool to see that my music that started out from the basement is now kind of affecting people. And to me, I don't feel like I've hit my potential yet. I haven't even touched the surface of what I'm able to do. And it's just exciting. Honestly, right now, I feel like there's a lot of support. A lot of people are supporting each other. I know, shout out to A.R. Paisley, shout out to Kevin Rowley, shout out to Young Tory. I've seen him out in LA recently. There's a lot of people that are kind of working together and it's just like Toronto is a city filled with artists. There's so many artists coming out of Toronto and it's like, it was also focused around like gang related things, but now it's more like who wants it more? Like who who's gonna sleep in the studio like type of shit? That's what Toronto is right now. It's it's hungry. There's no buddy buddy games. There's no like oh like you hurt my feelings with this. Nah, like people are coming for the bag. And I feel like it's not more so competitive. It's encouraging and it's it wakes you up. It makes you grow up really fast. Like there's no time for immature shit. Like people are flying out to Miami and LA every other day. Why are you sitting there doing nothing? And that's what the Toronto scene is. It's more about challenging you as an artist. It's not it's not here to, to put you down and kill your feelings or make you feel like shit. It's more so a wake up call that there's a lot of hungry people and only a few will really make it to the top. And I feel like, honestly, the Toronto scene is not hard to make connections because one person will know a hundred people and a hundred people will know a thousand people and it, the list just goes on. So if you're not weird, if you're not awkward and you're able to talk to people, I think it should be pretty easy to maneuver your way around, but it takes more than talent. It takes more than hard work to, to make it in a city like Toronto. The reason it was my worst job is because I had to like portray a fake, like fake, fake personality and just let people know like, oh, hey, I'm selling you this. Like, it's great because I think it's great and like not because it's actually great. I was selling like random products and I had to like put on a specific face to kind of sell it easier. And that's what I didn't like. I didn't like being someone I wasn't. And I always knew like, when you get a regular job, like you have to put on a face that isn't you. You have to be someone you're not, especially for a creative, someone who enjoys the process of creating art. It wasn't, it wasn't a pleasant process, bro. Like me having to fake a personality because I wanted to sell a product or I wanted to make someone think some way of me, that, that just wasn't, it wasn't a good job. If you have someone giving you shit and you're not happy, like find another job, bro. Like don't don't force yourself to be in a situation where you're unhappy because that takes a toll in the long term. Like it's it's gonna affect you a lot. And whatever dreams you had, whatever hopes you have, like if you keep putting yourself in a situation where you're forced down by barriers, you're, you're gonna crush everything. And you won't be able to chase these dreams after you stop feeling the need to chase them because you feel secure and something unhappy. And the key to everything is just being happy and being content. You could have nothing and still be content. And that's because you're doing something you love. My goals this year are mostly to be happy, to be content with what I'm doing and to, to make people around me feel secure. Because at the end of the day, like we harvest what we plant and when you plant something, it takes time for you to harvest it. So I feel like 2018, I was planning. I was just planning, like doing stuff and just making sure the seeds were right. Now it's like 2019, I'm, I'm still making sure that the crops, everything is going good, maintaining a lot of things. But this debut album is going to be my main focus for 2019. Just everything around it, the visuals, the press tour, the shows that are going to come out of it the everything's gonna change after this album and that's that's my main focus this year that's all i'm focused on soon not later if y'all vibe with me man go check out my music check out my page shout out to push the wall for doing this because y'all really showing the boy love like i'm gonna look back years from now and just kind of think like damn that's who i was so if y'all supporting me now 
I really appreciate you guys. Like, it's a growing process. I want everybody to know that I'm going to be bringing out a lot of content. Just for my career as a person, I know what I'm going to be doing. It's going to be exciting stuff. So for the people that are supporting me today, I won't let y'all down. I won't. <laughs>